in this preview I'm going to retread some of the same ground I've already flown. I'm going to fly from McCarthy to Cordova, which are both already on our Pacific Northwest series. So if you just want to go to the downloads page and search for McCarthy, you'll find the legs of the Pacific Northwest series that went in and out of McCarthy. And you'll notice that it's coming from a glacier to a glacier. So there's not a whole lot of airports out here, which is how I ended up at McCarthy. It was the only airport I could find within 100 miles of where I needed to be. But at the time I did not realize where I was for example the million dollar bridge which I'll talk about in flight was already on the route and McCarthy was already on the route this route is from the copper mine up here in McCarthy the Bonanza copper mine I'm flying the pilotus with skis because it's a fairly long route. It's 140 miles just based on the push pins, but we're gonna try and follow the rail line all the way from McCarthy all the way to Cordova, which is what they had to do in 1900. There's a couple trestles and some other stuff. If we can find them, we'll find them. Let's go ahead and fly it. So I'm flying the uh, Pilotus PC-6 so I can make maybe a little better time than I would in the X-Cub. The visibility is still pretty good. The name of the aircraft is the PC-6 Gauge. I didn't realize it actually has a Garmin. It's recognizing the user waypoint, so it should be good to go. As always, these flight plans are free to fly for everyone, so just download them at simflightplan.com slash downloads. I'll include the link to this one in the description. When I first flew this out of McCarthy, we flew up the glacier a little bit there to do a little sightseeing. And I actually kind of thought that flight simulator was maybe screwing up the colors because if you look at the glacier, it's really green. It's a really strange kind of brown green color compared to a lot of the glaciers earlier in the flight. And the reason for that is because one of the world's largest copper deposits is here. The story goes that a couple of guys, Tarantula Jack Smith and Clarence Walters, maybe? I'm sorry for the second guy, but I remember Tarantula Jack, were, I guess, coming up the river here, and they saw a green patch in the mountain. Flight simulators probably interpreting any green patches in the mountains as grass, but what they saw was this green patch up in the mountains and they thought, well, gee, that might be a good place to raise some sheep. And when they climbed up here, they found the Bonanza mine, which is right up here at the top of Bonanza Ridge. This is Bonanza Ridge, and there's a mother load mine, and there should be another mine up here, the Bonanza Mine. Actually, two more. Yeah, there's the Bonanza Mine, and there should be an Erie Mine, and I think even a uh, Jumbo Mine. That's why I'm flying the Pilotus, so I can get up here super quick. And we'll see what we can see in terms of the mines. They discovered that in 1900, and it took several years for them to convince, I think it was... Well, I know is J.P. Morgan is one of them, and I think Guggenheim was another one to raise the money to put in the rail they were going to need to get the copper out of here and out to the Pacific Ocean. And having flown this before, it occurred to me how incredibly difficult that must have been in 1900 just to build the railroad and the mine. They would have had to pack everything in by mule or horse. The mines should be on this ridge or at least some of the mines should be up there. Let's swing back around because you can see falling down buildings in some of the satellite imagery. We'll zoom way in too. Doesn't seem to be anything at the mother load mine, but the Bonanza mine, you can see the remains of the building falling down. Okay, so the Bonanza mine's gonna be right along these ridges on the other side. So again, the weird green color you can actually see from up here, all on this side of the glacier, it's all green. And on the other side of the glacier, it's, you know, more normal glacier colored, I guess. I think I see the Bonanza mine right down there, or the remains of it. You can see the trails coming up. I think basically that dark spot on the imagery is our Bonanza mine. 
I didn't really expect to see much in terms of the mines themselves, but you can see going down across near the runway and then along the skirt of the hills here is the clearing, which is now Highway 10, I believe, most of the way. But you can tell it's the rail line. It runs straight as an arrow all along, and we'll continue to look for it on the ground as we fly. Let's go up the glacier, too, and see if we can find the jumbo mine. I believe it's up in here somewhere. The Erie and the jumbo mines are on the north slope, and the mother load and bonanza mines are on the south slope of Bonanza Peak. And essentially, they connected them all with tunnels, so it's hollow where they dug out the copper vein. They hollowed out that mountain and shipped it all to the Pacific Ocean on the rail line that we're going to try and follow. But if you imagine trying to do this in 1900, when there was absolutely nothing here, when Tarantula Jack and his buddy came up here, initially they would have come in, I guess, from Cordova, because I guess that was the only town at the time. They would have been on horse or muleback, maybe kayaks. There were steamships, but nothing you could bring up the river. So this is essentially the west face of Bonanza Peak and we'll swing around the north face, see if we see anything. Even the satellite to this day, it kind of picks up the dirt as having a green tint to it. There must be buildings and stuff up through there. The National Park Service has maps of the trails. This is in the Wrangell National Park, I believe, and there's trails that run up to the mines. See, here's Erie Lake, so presumably the Erie mine is somewhere up through here. The trail probably follows the river, and there's a good look at Erie Lake. And you can really see how this glacier is kind of just tinted green from all the copper. Up in there is where you have to go. In fact, you can see the trail. If you decide to go to Wrangell National Park and hike up to the Bonanza Peak, it was super easy in a pilot's PC-6, but you're gonna be hiking all day up there, I would expect. I think there's part of the town left, buildings maybe, down here. There's the lodge and national park type stuff, I assume, museums and so forth. Wow, it's a lot more than I expected. There's our railroad track, and actually there's some more buildings and stuff down here. So there's what probably amounts to historical buildings all along here, along with the normal national park lodges and stuff like that. This is definitely our railroad track. Gain a little altitude, I lost the the rail line it should be up there along the base of the ridge yeah there it is i've spotted it pretty easy to follow with the new growth forest and i guess that's right follows the road anyway i guess that's the nizina river down here and basically you've got to go all the way out here for a good crossing or at least that's what they did so we should be coming up to a modern bridge to the highway. Again, one would assume right over the top of the old rail bridge. We can look up and down the river a little bit, make sure there's no ruins. So it basically took Tarantula Jack and, and his partner there like five years, I guess, to convince JP Morgan and the Guggenheims to put up the money just to build the rail line to get the copper out of here. Just the one bridge called the Million Dollar Bridge, which I don't know what that is in today's money, but it's it's a lot. And we'll see that as we get closer to Cordova. But they had to build a super strong bridge because the glacier on the river calves and essentially the size of the icebergs that are calving off the glacier would just wipe out the bridge if they didn't put these special footings, I guess, in front of the actual bridge footings to break up the icebergs before the icebergs break up the bridge. So it was ridiculously expensive on top of all this material having to be presumably shipped in. I guess maybe a lot of the lumber they probably could have cut locally in the spring and summer, but any other supplies would have to be shipped in at that time, probably from San Francisco by steamship and then hauled out here by mule. So we're 
six miles away from the Gilhana trestle, and I thought I saw in the satellite imagery the remnants of the train trestle right here. I've seen trestles before in Flight Simulator, so sometimes it does recognize them, but this one's going to be pretty ruined. There's not much there, but you can tell it's a rail. You zoom into the satellite. I mean, that's clearly our railroad trestle. There's our modern road. And then the trestle should be basically almost visible from the road, I would think, as it goes around this bend. Should be up in these trees somewhere. You'd think you'd at least be able to see a curve shaped cut in the trees. Oh, you kind of can from here. I think I see a break in the trees that's kind of an arch just to the outside. See, it seems to be kind of a dark spot through here. Oh, there it is. Yeah, you can even sort of see some symmetry where it's picking up the ties. The Cusculana Bridge, I guess judging by the path of the road for an early 1900 steam train, that would be an okay track. Oh yeah, there's actually like two paths, so I'll bet you there is a still a rail bridge or maybe the remnants of the rail bridge. Oh, that may be the shadow. Considering Morgan and Guggenheim spent a fortune putting that path there, we might as well make use of it. Of course, they got their money's worth. The mine on Bonanza Ridge produced from, I think it was 1909 to 1938. So 20 years of pulling train load after train load of copper in the early 1900s. I don't know what their margin ended up being, but I'm sure they made their money back and then some. Okay, so we're coming into Chitna, which is an actual community here at the confluence of these two rivers. Wow, and then we still got to go all the way down the river here. I remember thinking when I flew the million dollar bridge here that they were probably there must be just a copper mine right up in here somewhere, right? Because they had to build a bridge right there. We're not even halfway. I think there's actually an airfield farther up at Rangel View RV Park. Here, let's take a look. That runway's every bit as long as McCarthy even, it looks like. Well, there's Chitna Airport. That's everything you could want in an airport out here. So this is off our beaten path, the Chitna Bridge down here at the end is really where we were going to follow, but if you wanted to just break it into shorter legs, you could go from McCarthy to Chitna, Chitna to Merle K. Mudhole Smith. I wonder if Merle K. Mudhole Smith is any relation to Tarantula Jack Smith. Gotta say, Tarantula Jack wins the nickname contest. Definitely better than Mudhole. I don't know that the road even continues from Chitna. Oh, there it is. Does it continue? No, it ends right outside of Chitna. Last stop Chitna. Somewhere out here, the rail line should continue because it leads to the million dollar bridge. I can swear I see a line right across that peninsula that comes right along here which would mean they would have had to put a bridge in there somewhere. Oh yeah, right along the edge. So they are on the west side. Oh, you can even see some track. Look at that. There's the remnants of a trestle at Haley Creek. So there should be a trestle right down here. Let's get down on the river. You can see Chitna Salmon Fishing Parking, so there must be a road that goes out there still, which one would guess is built on the old tracks. That was definitely a rail trestle or the remnants of a, a trestle at Haley Creek. Let's get right on the river. So right on the other side of this little peninsula here, there should be a destroyed train trestle it's around this next bend. You can sort of still see what looks like train tracks.
There's our trestle, our ruined trestle. <laughs> Do they continue to follow the river? Oh, we got nothing now. Oh no, there it is. That looks like train track to me still, or the route of the train track. I imagine that all the icebergs from the glaciers calving are really freaking out flight simulator or freaking out the elevation data for the river here because they're coming down this river all the time, year after year. That was the whole reason behind the million dollar bridge being so expensive was the fact that they did have to protect it from the glaciers calving. It still kind of looks like a human presence along the edge. Those has got to be a train track. You can practically see the ties. Let's just switch to satellite. Heck. That sure does look like it's trees that grew back in after the tracks rotted away. The thing that surprises me about it being so close to the riverbank is I would have thought the river levels would vary enough that they'd flood out at some points, like in the spring. We're only 14 miles from the Million Dollar Bridge, so it's right around this next corner, if you want to call it that. And this is basically where I thought the train line ended. When I first flew the Million Dollar Bridge, I figured the copper mine itself would be up in here somewhere. I even flew around up here looking for anything that looked like a trail leading up into the hills for a mine, but I was way on the wrong track. I was about an hour away by flight to where the actual copper mine was. I think you'll start to be able to see the tracks again as we lead up to the Million Dollar Bridge. Yeah, it looks like the satellite's starting to show, uh, breaking the trees anyway. I'm guessing that may be the tracks. Switch back to satellite. I mean, the roadmap's not going to show us anything. I think I see a straight line across where it's kind of bare here. It looks kind of suspiciously like a railroad track, and that's right where it should be according to the satellite imagery. And the Million Dollar Bridge should be right here around this hill, I think. Well, so there's where our train tracks bend towards the bridge. You can see the clearing right there. And the bridge isn't pictured, but if you get close to it, you can actually see where the bridge is in the photogrammetry on both banks. There's actually a building on this side, but it was called the Million Dollar Bridge because they had to build... Let's see, is there, did anybody leave us some photogrammetry? No, no picture takers. Does it not, maybe it doesn't show up in satellite. No, nobody's even taken a picture of it. Bummer. It's got a, almost an extra set of footings in front of the actual bridge footings so that as this glacier calves, it doesn't wipe out the bridge every spring. So that's why it was a million dollar bridge. In the 2000s at some point, it was starting to fall down and they actually had to go out and repair it so that it wouldn't collapse because lead paint was used. They didn't want basically what amounts to hazardous waste in the river. Oh, there's our, uh, there's a building back in there. I think this is all still part of a park or national forest, so you can actually hike back here, and I think you can actually hike across the Million Dollar Bridge, but you can see some of the satellite imagery of it. And there's another building. Wow, you can even see the holes in the roof. I guess that's what that is. Oh, no, those are, what do they call those, porticos? Oh, yeah, there's a big old lodge back in there, maybe a visitor center or something. National Parks is pretty good about that kind of thing. And those look to be all sorts of maybe hiking and camping trails. That may actually be a campground, the way it all looks like it's arranged. I guess maybe you can get back in here with a Jeep. Oh, you can see the straight line off in the distance, barely. Yep, it goes out this way. That's an interesting little rectangular clearing. 
wonder if that was a, an airstrip at one point. Maybe even a place for the train. They probably had to stop for water along the way. Guess there's no shortage of water out here, but presumably they would have built water towers just to get the water up into the steam train. And obviously I've been obsessing over the train tracks, but the scenery out all through Alaska and British Columbia is pretty amazing. Parts of it are thin just because it's so remote, just no satellite imagery, but otherwise where there is satellite imagery, it's all super cool. And there's our causeway, which you gotta believe follows the old train trestle locations. They're all cement now. now. I was just about to say, I'm surprised they don't get wiped out by the icebergs, and it looks like this one did get wiped out by the icebergs. In fact, even the Google map shows it as not being connected. That's pretty cool. Well, not cool for the park service that is missing a bridge. And there's what's left of their bridge, their causeway, Highway 10. I don't think it's any mystery what wiped that thing out. Here's our modern Flag Point Channel Bridge, which you'd expect would follow the same route. Oh, we got submarine cars. Is this one also gone? According to Google, it's still there. We're still 20 miles from Cordova, so even though you're in the home stretch, you still got 20 miles, even though the Pacific Northwest series does go to Merle K. Mudhole Smith Airport. I don't know that I ever actually went and checked out Cordova. That was where all of the copper was put on ships, and I'm gonna guess went to San Francisco or maybe Seattle. Early 1900s would have had to have been San Francisco, I think. There's a good look at Mudhole Smith Airport with all, all the modern conveniences. We're going to come back around after we check out Cordova. Now our Pacific Northwest series, of course my passenger window is super dirty in this pilotus, but comes down that way, down the rivers and glaciers there. It actually comes from, I think it's a glacier landing before Mudhole Smith. Now that's a pretty cool leg of the Pacific Northwest series if you like flying through the mountains and glaciers. And here's beautiful downtown Cordova, where I assume the railroad tracks used to come in where 10 is currently. That's still 10 right there. And probably end up right down there, yeah, where the road seems to go right to the dock. I'm gonna guess the copper ore went on ships right here, and then the train went back up to the mine. And here's the Cordova waterfront. There's a Coast Guard station right here. Looks like hotels and shops and the like in downtown Cordoba. And we're going to go back around to Mudhole Smith. I really didn't need a skis aircraft. I flew the pilotus just in case, I don't know, in case I wanted to land on a glacier or something, but it was completely unnecessary. I actually could have flown floats and just landed at the dock at Cordova. But in honor of Tarantula Jack Smith, which I'm going to assume Mudhole Smith was related to, we're going to land at Mudhole Smith Airport, which we are pretty much lined up for right now. Merle K. Mudhole Smith. So we can taxi off this way, get off the runway. And that is the route that the copper had to take from the Bonanza mine all the way to Cordova. This flight plan is, or it will be available on simflightplan.com slash download. I'll include the link to this one in the description box. If you enjoyed this, please like and subscribe.